welcome back to the ABCs of ERP and beyond. And we are now in part three of our insightful series on manufacturing through ERP. So far, we've embarked on a journey exploring the essential role of ERP systems for manufacturers. Part one, we laid the foundations, introducing the concept of ERP in manufacturing. In part two, we dived deep into the capabilities of Business Central, showcasing why it's an excellent choice for manufacturers. And today, in our third and final episode of this series, we turn our focus to Acumatica and its robust manufacturing capabilities. Acumatica is another leading player in the ERP landscape. It offers a unique blend of features tailored for the manufacturing industry. So join us as we delve into Acumatica's functionalities and show why it's a powerful tool for modern manufacturing. Whether you're evaluating ERP options or just curious about Acumatica, well, hopefully this episode you'll find packed with insights that will guide your ERP journey and decisions in manufacturing. But as ever, I could not do it without my esteemed co-host, Narav Shah. Welcome back. Hey, Peter. How are you? <clears throat> I'm happy to be here again and talk about, um, you know, this time Acumatica and manufacturing and its capabilities of how it's going to, you know, how it could help manufacturers with really deep functionality that's necessary of, you know, to, to have good insight on the production floor and that equals labor, material, and then from a planning perspective, how we could plan our demand a little better, right? Demand is coming in from all of these different places. You got sales order demand, you have forecast demand, safety stock demand, of, um, you know, maybe reorder point demand, all these independent demands and dependent demands. But essentially today we're going to focus on um, these production orders, releasing them to the floor, right? And, and what what options you have in the uh, production order process, right? Acumatica, a little different than Business Central. Ultimately, they both, you know, handle production very, very well. Acumatica is clearly different in certain areas that I definitely want to point out today and its functionality. So you could kind of determine, you know, which particular product might be a better fit for your manufacturing, right, organization. Um so I think, I think without further ado, Peter, I think we could just dive right into the product and, and begin showing Acumatica to our users. You know, why is Acumatica manufacturing good, right? Um, it, it, it's, it's deep functionality. It has the ability to peg itself to like projects, to a configurator, to sales orders, right? <coughs> Think of a make-to-order manufacturer that needs the ability to quickly launch production orders from these different source demands, right? It could do that very quickly and link itself to the source demand. Um, it has the ability to obviously change your bomb and change your router on the fly on the production order itself. Um, it has some clear differentiators from BC that it has integrated engineering change management. And Business Central doesn't have integrated engineering change management. That is a third party solution. Um, and it also has a uh, integrated CAD, uh, CAD system. So if you had, if you're a make to order manufacturer or project manufacturer that heavily engineers your products through uh, engineering applications, well, there is an integration that's native to Acumatica that could pull in those build materials, pull in those items, new items that you're creating into Acumatica so they're usable when you start to go through the manufacturing side in the system. Um, and you know, there's a few others, but the last one I wanna just point out is that there's integrated shop floor data capture. So if you wanted to you know, scan your operations as you're scanning on and off of, of particular operation steps, well, that capability is available out of the box. There's no third party solution that you need to uh, purchase to, to have that and rely on you know, uh, a third party vendor to manage that particular piece of software. But this is all kind of baked in to the Acumatica footprint. So which is which is really nice, right? Because in, in, in manufacturing, I always recommend, and I think which is pretty much best practice, unless you're already coming off of like, let's say a robust like system like SAP or already a demand mm -hmm. planning software or full MES manufacturing execution system software or something like that, I always recommend starting out manufacturing, configuring it uh, very flexible. So you could, 
you know, create production orders. If you need to make changes, you can do it quickly. Um, if you need to go ahead and complete, uh, uh, you know, reversal of issues, reversal of labor, because somebody forgot to log off, right? You want the flexibility to complete changes and complete the orders very, very easily without the, you know, uh, uh, without the errors or issues where if you have over implemented on the manufacturing side and you have all these different, let's say, fences, quote unquote, set up, you, you mm -hmm. have all these picks out there or you have all these, uh, you know, mid maxes, you have bin replenishment, you have, you know, um, um, where, where you can't start another up the, 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 the second operation without finishing the first operation. If you start adding all these rules into it and you're not coming off of a rule based system already, right, it's going to be harder and it could essentially slow your manufacturing process down, right? I always recommend uh, at, at, at any point when you're doing a manufacturing implementation, right? How many production orders are you releasing every day? How many production orders are you completing every day? Those are two benchmarks for me personally when we go into our implementation is that whatever process we decide to implement, we have to make sure the process is at least capable to manage and complete and meet those two thresholds, which are how many production orders do you create every day and release to the floor? And how many production orders do you meet? And even then we take it one step further and say, well, let's add 20% to that because we're expecting growth in your business, right? So that first drives, well, what is going to be the out of the box manufacturing processes that we're going to implement in the ERP system? So that's always for us, like, you know, um, the bare minimum, if you will, and what processes we want to implement. We don't start on the other side. We don't say, hey, guys, here's a system and here are the, the, these amazing functionality that you have. Let's implement that right out of the gate without understanding, you know, what we need to um, first hit for a phase one and then still kind of keep that growth element in the back of our head as we're, as we're implementing manufacturing processes. Whether it's Acumatic or Business Central, other ERP systems, that's kind of what we like to recommend is in terms of best practice because the last thing you want is where you – implement you, you bought the shiny new system and then you implement manufacturing and you 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 decide that you want to implement all the functionality that manufacturing has to offer and then when you go live instead of you completing 100 production orders a day you can only complete 10 because there's so many steps because there's so many nuances right because you know the users are being bogged down by data entry there's so many reversals that are happening right so you really got to take that into consideration is, you know, what are we implementing? What does phase one look like? What does phase two look like? And manufacturing, you could easily over implement if you don't know, right? All the different ways you could bring up manufacturing in PC or in Acumatica. So here in Acumatica, I wanted to start off and show this what we call dashboard. And this is a real nice dashboard for, uh, you know, the managers, you know, in the manufacturing space, uh, warehouse worker space, right? And there's different dashboards that Acumatica has to offer. The specific one is the production manager dashboard. And you can see it's very visual right out of the box. I really like the, 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 the color quoted that they have here. You got the stoplight approach. You got the green, the yellow, the red, right? That's telling us very quickly visually that these are my uh, production orders, whether I'm on time, whether I'm late, um, you know, past due operations. It's giving me a good heads up of, hey, I have to go and light a fire under somebody's, you know, to go ahead and get <laughs> some of the work done or to get something done and get something going, right? Which is, <clears throat> which is great because this could be my, my daily cue, my daily work list, if you will, on uh, what I need to start, you know, bringing to the table and uh, start honing my attention on. Uh, you have a funnel chart, right, giving you an idea of, you know, how many planned orders I have versus, you know, completed orders and released orders, right, which is really nice. And I could zoom into any one of these and, and click it to see the detail. Here I have a nice little kind of, um, you know, chart here that's telling me our work queues and my capacities that I have out there, uh, my quantity and stuff, which is nice. It looks like Work Center 40 is going to have a lot more production going into it. So maybe, you know, I might just pick up the phone and uh, see if there's somebody else in the warehouse that can go in the system, work center 40 to, 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 you know, quickly complete some of the load that's there, right? Or maybe we need to buy some, some temp labor or something like that. So I, I could quickly and easily see that. I mean, you see these other 
charts here. I mean, they're they're pretty they're pretty nice. I mean, you know, as you see it out of the box, you look at this and you're mm-hmm. like, wow, okay, I get some pretty good information. Labor variances per month, variances per quarter, right? Top five uh, variances this period. Um, top five whip orders, which is which is really nice. This is telling you, hey, this order is getting way out of hand here. You know, we have a lot of whip here, maybe. So I have to kind of check what's going on. How come, you know, is someone, did we get bad material from a vendor? That we have to keep scrapping material and keep issuing new material? Or is it somebody that's, you know, spending more time in a specific operation than what we initially budgeted? So that's, you know, these are real nice reports. Um, you know, even to use, I think, for like stand-up meetings. You know, could you imagine, Peter, like you have a stand-up meeting and you're yeah. like, all right, guys, let's just, let's just use this dashboard to do our stand-up. And say, okay, where are we right now? What have we, what haven't we completed yet? What haven't we started? What did we start? Right? Um, you can start really drilling into it um, and 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 really have some productive communication within your uh, supervisors on the manufacturing floor. I think one of the things that stands out to to me compared to some of the BC dashboards that we see now, we know that Power BI is implemented into BC and drives most of the visuals from that. Um, but these tend to be kind of more action orientated ones, aren't they, compared to the BC ones? Yeah. The BC ones might be, um, you know, value of production orders over time. Like, okay, that's cool. What do I do with that information? <laughs> Whereas these yeah. ones seem to be more like driving action, aren't they? Variances, um, labor variances is one, for example. As you said, top five WIP value orders, uh, material yeah. event variances. These are things yeah. that normally would require an action or an alert to say are things come spiraling out of control here or not. And it encourages communication, right, throughout the different departments to say, um, hey, what's you know, this is what's going on. Let me give you a heads up or let me focus my attention here. Um, I, I, I really do. I really do like the Acumatica dashboards overall. Um, I think they do a great job of bringing at least some key information up on the screen versus just, you know, what we see on the BC side sometimes is some of the generic top five items. Like, what am I going to yeah. do with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, my top five customers, like, you know, yeah, that, that's great. But I need, you know, this, this gives me information that will help me make my floor more efficient, manufacturing floor more efficient. And I could, I could try to um, maybe increase throughput, right? If I could kind of see here, why come we're only making two of this item, right? We should be really be making 10 of this item. Well, now I have that in, in the back of my head. I could go and update the, the, the stock item master so the lot size could be 10 moving forward right stuff like that that i could start start really um making a uh, uh an argument for and maybe we should produce more of something or produce less of something it just kind of gives more data right now now it's all about mm-hmm. the data now right it's instead of me hunting and pecking for this information through the system or running another uh, another software right to get this i see this right here on my dashboard kind of moving on from this right um uh, just want to quickly mention the licensing model for Acumatica. Unlike BC, Business Central is a user-based, uh, named user licensing model, right? Um, versus Acumatica is what we call a consumption-based licensing model. So it all depends on the number of transactions that you do, essentially, um, and uh, uh, related records you create. So, you know, if you, especially if you're a production or a manufacturing company, take that into account because your number of transactions could go up uh, if you have, if you do a ton of production orders, right? Think about doing a production order creates a purchase order, and then that creates a purchase invoice too, right? Because you have to buy the raw material. Um, there's eight categories of tr- document types that is effectively considered a transaction in the system. So you have, I think, an inventory movement. You have a, a sales invoice. You have a sales order. You have a purchase order, purchase receipt, purchase invoice. Um, right? All these are considered transactions in the system. Uh, individual transactions, but like if you have production, right, you're creating a lot of purchase orders because you're ordering for those raw materials, right? So take that into consideration. Acumatica is a consumption-based model uh, for licensing, which which could work for your favor or you know may increase the cost on the licensing side. So do all do also know that 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 is an important point. Um, you know, so deciding between two systems, uh, especially between Acumatica and BC, uh, we should probably have a discussion around. You know, what is the optimal licensing budget that you're looking for? And then from there, look at functionality and then find find the right fit for you guys. Right. So 
that's the licensing part. I'm going to start moving into Acumatica and talk a little bit about some of the setups. We'll look at some of the, some of the uh, you know specific uh, ways you can set items up. We'll look at the bill of material. We'll look at shop calendars. We'll look at work centers, right, machine centers, and then we'll pop right into production. Is, is kind of what I'm thinking here to give a good general overview of the manufacturing process. I think, you know, over time, I think we'll probably also go through um, specific manufacturing examples uh, where we maybe we want to see a, an example of shop floor activity or we want to see examples of picks. We want to see examples of, uh, you know, production related to a job and how we how do we issue, you know, material coming off of production or into a job. Right. Well, Kind of throw in all these other examples later on. I just want to kind of get a good overview of how, you know, Acumatica production kind of works out of the box standalone. So I'm going to navigate to our stock item. And a lot of our setup is st starting over there. And I'm going to use this item, MG Widget. All right. And this item, MG Widget, widget um, it's an item in our master. It's a manufactured assembly item. I'm going to go to my manufacturing tab and we have a default bill of material. So this is an important point if it's a manufactured item that we have a default bill of material and we have we could check MRP if we're going to plan this to MRP if there's going to be a make to order item we could check that. Essentially what that means is directly through a sales order I can create a production order for this specific item. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at the bill of material. I could open up my bill of material page for this item and this would tell me you know, both, you know, unlike BC, you have a routing record and a bomb record, which are different in Acumatica. It all kind of appears in one screen, which is kind of nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can maintain specific bombs and specific routers and versions of a combination of both um, here in the Acumatica screen. So you see in this particular example, I have two steps, assembly and inspection. I have my un run unit. So I could tell the system that, you know, we typically run a um, hundred units of this. And we make that in 30 minutes or one hour if we had setup time and runtime associated to it. Uh, we have queue time available as well, move time, finish time. These are all specific uh, values and variables you could add to your router, right? Uh, th one thing to note is the system, just like BC, uh, based on specific operation step, you could associate um, uh, material. So here in this case, we're saying on the assembly step, we're gonna back flush the labor and we have two raw material items. We have widgets, 0, 1, and 0, 3, that we also need to make uh, uh, this particular uh, master widget item that we're making here. And, and these two uh, components will be back flushed with this flag at the time of back flushing our first operation step. Okay, so this is kind of a very simplistic example of saying, you know, I'm not going to do shop floor. I'm not going to, you know, um, track labor in real time. You know, I'm going to just back flush my, my labor in standard, whatever that, that, that routing time and setup time is, and also back flush the raw material, right? Now, maybe I don't have the, the people or resources to go ahead and, and, and do the shop floor activities. I don't, maybe I'm not interested in capturing actual time right now. Um, that's happening on the floor, right? But I am interested in creating some standardization and what my routing should be as I'm moving forward. And maybe as a phase two, I'll go ahead and implement shop floor, right? As my business is growing, as, as I'm getting more uh, familiar with the manufacturing methodologies and processes within the system, okay? Um, and if I, if, if I go ahead and look at operation... Uh, 20 here, which is especially, you notice there is no components necessary for that operation. So there, I haven't added anything here. So it said, all right, there's no, no inventory that's necessary here. It's all going to be consumed on the assembly step for us. All right. Um, another thing I want to point out here is the ability to calculate bomb cost. So this is a very helpful feature. If you're, oh, if you want to see, like if I made, let's say 15,000 of this widget. Okay. And what would my cost be? So it takes that and extrapolates your cost for your labor and your material out. So you can kind of see, well, you know, as I'm quoting, well, you know, this is going to cost me $187,000 of variable labor and have $15,000 of overhead and 1.1 million of uh, material cost. So essentially my total cost would be $1.3 million. So my unit cost per piece would be $91, essentially. Okay. 
So it's giving you an idea of, you know, costing your bill of material out based on, you know, a specific quantity that you may want to produce in the future. I feel like it's a helpful feature. I, I've had some clients that have requested something similar to this, and it's very nice to show this very quickly. So they could, you know, instead of using an Excel, Excel export or something like that, they could do this right to the UI very quickly. Now, going into the work center, I'm just going to go drill into the work center. I'm just going to show a few things here. Here's our work center master. <clears throat> we can decide what our crew size is here, right? For the crew size of machine, machines that we're using. Uh, we could defi define that here. We're going to backflow material, backflow labor. But if this was an outside process step, then we could flag outside process. Very similar to Business Central. Okay, by the way, you know how Business Central, if on the work center card, you know, we, could, we could identify a subcontracting vendor uh, there. Uh, we have shifts here. So here we put the shift. Uh, we have a crew size of one on the shift. But think about like, you know, you're running a multi-shift operation. You have two uh, shifts that you run or three shifts that you run. We could create those different calendars essentially, right? So if I drill into the calendar, we could say, well, here's our shifts. You know, I could keep adding more shifts here um, as I need. So the system knows the starting and ending time for those shifts. And we'll actually plan the capacity accordingly so it knows whether there's enough capacity available for that day to schedule another production order to come in through there. All right. Uh, if there's any machine centers associated here, we could see machines associated to the work center. Kind of think of that as like the parent-child relationship where you can you see you had a master drilling department. And within that department, you had like a two-inch drill press. You had a, you had, you had a, let's say a 10 inch drill press, you had uh, you know, a, a 15 ton drill press, whatever that is, right? You can have all these unique machine centers that roll up to a work center, and then you can plan at the machine center level and add a machine center to your routing, okay? So that's the kind of real high level at, you know, what, you know structuring the bill of material and routing for, for, for uh, an item. And now I'm gonna kind of jump right into creating a production order. I'm gonna go navigate to production. Production order here. Production order maintenance is where we create our production. These are all our production orders here in Acumatico. You'll notice that uh, they're they're listed by order type. Okay, I'll come to order type in a little minute here, but that's really important. Our production order numbers, our inventory item that we're making, what the status is of these production orders, right? So here we see we have closed, completed, released, planned, right? What what the heck do all these statuses mean? Well, let me break it down and make it very simple for everybody. Planned is kind of like, if you think about the BC terminology, it's like a firm planned order in BC. So planned essentially allows you to go ahead and prime the order, make sure you have enough material, make sure you have enough capacity before you release the order to the floor, okay? And you start executing on that production order. And then once it's in released status, uh, you start producing it, which then will go into in process, okay? And from in process, it moves to closed once you've output it and the inventory is on hand, okay? And you notice out of the box, Acumatica delivers these pre-filtered tabs for you in this, in this production order list view. So you could quickly kind of come in here and see how many planned here you have, how many released, in process, completed, and closed. So here's a differentiator, right, versus Business Central. You kind of have to bounce to different pages. Like you have to go to a planned production order page. You have to go to a firm planned production order page. You have to go to a release production order page, right, or completed. Here, all these statuses sit within the same page. And you can run your own filters or create your own tabs of the different filters that you want to see the different production order statuses in, which I, I find kind of nice because you're not mm -hmm. bouncing around everywhere, right? Yeah. So you could bounce between in process, you could bounce between uh, released, plan, you know, completed uh, within one page. I'll go create a new production order for us here. So order type, I mentioned that that's an important field. So order type, these are different type of production orders that you could create in the system. So I'll maximize this. You could create a capable to promise order, a disassembly order, which is different. BC doesn't have this disassembly production order to be able to deconstruct something and put the bill of material back into inventory. And we should probably do a, a, a episode on that, but this is really helpful like in those industries where you sell uh, 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 you know, component pieces where you have to uninstall things potentially and then things come in that are still salvageable from a return where you could create a deconstruction order and then whatever you could go ahead and put back into inventory, put back into inventory and scrap the parent item um, 
uh, when you when you post that production order. So which is which is really nice. You have a project production order that you can link a project to an MRP plan order, preventive maintenance order, um, <clears throat> uh, regular orders, and service repair orders. There's a lot of functionality here, which I think is deeper than Business Central, and allows you mm -hmm. to do a lot more on the manufacturing side. What we're going to focus in on today is going to be the regular orders here that we're going to talk about is the ability to take a planned order and move that into a, a release production order and then kind of manage that for today's session. I'll select the regular regular order. We'll get the next production order number. And here I'm going to put in my item number. This is the MG widget. Okay. It brings in the warehouse that we're going to uh, manufacture this and the location, the default location that this is going to go into. Okay, location is equivalent to a bin in Business Central. Okay, so that's just location. I kind of like how it's on the header. In Business Central, you, you have to move down all the way to the posting tab, put in the yeah. uh, bin, and then go back up and refresh it. And <clears throat> I think it's just a few unnecessary steps there. But essentially, we could, you know, coming through here, the location, put in the quantity that we want to manufacture. Let's say we want to do two pieces here. Okay. Um, as we go through here in our general tab <clears throat> down below, we tell the system this is kind of unscheduled at the moment because our status is still planned up here. Right? You'll see the status change once we, once we um, um, save this production order and then change it to release. We come down here. We can tell the system if there's any constraints, the starting and ending date, fixed date, used order date for MRP, exclude from MRP, which is nice. Right? Costing method. Actual, standard, or estimated. When we scrap, when we're going to scrap to, and actual, Acumatica does actual scrap. Unlike Business Central, where scrap is more of a reference-only type of uh, element, this does actual scrap, which is, which is really nice. If I go to references here, if I created this production order directly from a sales order, I will see that sales order information come directly through here. Right, The source type, where we create the bomb from. Is it going to be the actual default bomb? Was it going to be the estimate? Right, There's a full estimating module in manufacturing as well that we should probably do a, a view on at some point. Uh, the configurator? Or is it product, production reference? Right, So you have some options of where you're going to bring your default bomb from. And then you have project. Here you can link this to a specific project. So if you wanted to kind of build that and, and move that manufacturing whip cost to a project, you can do that very easily. Acumatica kind of um, uh, has that bridge between manufacturing and jobs, uh, projects uh, versus Business Central. They kind of sit in its own silo. They really don't talk to each other until you move that production item, um, issue that production item into, into projects. You have your default WIP and all that information. The system knows what, what, what accounts you're going to credit and debit. Okay. Events is as you start, you know, working through this production or the system will keep track of all the different activities happening to this production. Whether you create a material movement, whether you go ahead and create a, a uh, inventory movement, whether you're going to go ahead and create close the production order, we'll keep track and audit the history of this production order. We'll go to totals. You know, we have nothing here yet and we have our line. So let's go and save this order, which will then go ahead and bring up the bill of material and items. So if you look at totals now, you see we have totals because it brought in the default bill. If you look at the production detail, it's going to bring in the bill of material that we saw initially. Okay. Um, we can still make changes to that uh, production order, bill of material, and routing if we want. But the next step we got to do is go into release. So that's going to basically get us to start executing the order. However, if you want to see, do we have enough material available, we could run critical material and will tell us if there's anything that we're short here, right? If we're not, if you want to see everything, whether we're short or not, we can like show all items and we'll show all items here for our bill of material. Now, here's a very interesting part. You know, if we're doing a lot of manual processes and we're kind of a phase one implementation and deployment and we're really not using MRP and MPS yet, uh, but if I wanted to create orders on the fly and I'm looking at my critical material list and I don't have enough inventory, well, I could select various different lines and create either a purchase order, a manufacturing order, or a transfer order very easily by looking at my list. Right? I think this is really helpful for SMB uh, customers because it keeps the control in their hand and uh, you know, they could start you know, 
deciding as you're releasing production, you know, when to create purchase orders, when to create the related manufacturing order for something, right? Mm -hmm. Makes you, allows you the user to follow the process, that their process very easily. Because maybe this is something that they were doing using Excel spreadsheets, you know, or QuickBooks, for example, right? So this, this kind of keeps the control in their hands here a little bit. So in our case, we have nothing short. So we'll go back. We'll go ahead and release this. Order is released. You notice the status has changed to released. And now I can go ahead and print my production order. Here's my traveler, as they call it, <clears throat> right? I can print this off, attach and, and, and link in documents that I want on here, essentially, and um, basically hand it to my production foreman to begin production. You notice these, these barcodes, really nice out of the box report. You know, if you were if you were to use a shop floor time capture functionality that's available out of the box with Acumatica, the, the barcodes are there and you're, you're off and running. Go back to our production order. So our first step we're gonna do here Okay, um, we could look at, oh, let's look at the production scheduling board here for us. We could see, right, how we're scheduling this item, which is really nice. We could schedule, okay. So now we could see, right, if we had additional orders, but we could see kind of color coordinated, whether orders are late, do we want to post, push something up, right, undo something. It's a, it's, it's a nice drag and drop display here. Um, looking at a few other options. <clears throat> if I wanted to firm schedule this, I could do that, or I could undo the firm schedule if I want as well. So I have some you know, additional um, flexibility in terms of how I'm gonna go ahead and schedule. If I view the schedule, let's see what we come up with here. So it's telling us that we're gonna schedule this and it's gonna be our setup, our runtime, our schedule date, end date, and it's gonna schedule based on these dates here. Now, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to release my materials. So get that out there and get that ready for back flushing. Okay. So essentially, it's already released in our case because we have it marked as back flushing, which is great. Otherwise, we'd see a list of materials here if we needed to create a pick for or if we needed to go ahead and manually release them to get them ready for back flushing. Okay. And because I've set my production order up very simplistically for me to go ahead and, and complete, I'm going to create my my move, which is a, a move issue that's essentially going to complete the output of this production order. And we'll go ahead and uh, move it to the next step. So here I have a quantity of two, right? We're going to move it. So it's going to move it out of operation 10 first. We're going to remove the hold, right? If I want to add the next one here, I could. If I want to add the next operation step, I could do that up here. Or I'll just go ahead and release the first step. So first step is released. Okay, and notice the first step, we released it, but we don't have any cost yet here at the moment. But I'll go ahead and complete the move on the second step. System knows now that I'm on step 20. Okay, and what, what location, what bin do I want to go ahead and move it to? So I can tell the system maybe instead of this R, R1, S1, I'm going to move it to R2, S3. Let's select that, right? I could scrap a quantity if I want to. I'll remove the hold, I'll release this, and now the system should complete a issue based on the last step, and you'll notice that we have an inventory reference line now. In this inventory reference line, I could open that up and I'll see the details behind this movement. System moved this inventory, completed it out of stock. I could see the financial entries that a system did here. It went ahead and debited inventory, credited our work in process inventory, okay, based on our back flush because we're back flushing at standard, right? We can look at our, our batch on the manufacturing side, right? Everything is auditable. It takes, it keeps everything against the production order. So if I close this, I close this, now I keep going back and I go back to our production, I look at our events, you'll see our audit for our production, <laughs> right? It tells us when it was created, released, we printed the report, what transactions did we complete, who did it, most importantly. Who did what? If I come back to our general tab, right, if I refresh this order, I'm just going to refresh my browser. You'll see our completed two. If I go to our line here, or let's go to our total, we have some labor, we have some material cost now, right? 
because we back flushed everything. Remember how we had this set up? Initially, very simplistic manufacturing. Now, if I want to close the order, you notice the system also automatically changes status to complete because it recognized that the quantity complete equals the quantity on the production order. I'll go ahead and close the order now. Order is closed and it's off my list. And now we'll see order 48, which is now closed. I could go into it, the status has changed to closed. And I could now go back and inquire on this, <clears throat> see what happened to it, right? Look at my events, right? This order has been closed um, and see anything else that I need to do with this. So, you know, this is really nice. I can't reopen it. I can't do anything else with it. Once you close it, that's the point of no return. Um, but, you know, I still have this available in history for us. So this was a quick kind of demo of the manufacturing module in Acumatico. And you can see that, you know, this is just scratching the surface. The processes to follow are simple, right? We could add many different layers to this production order process as sophisticated as you need or as, as simple as we need. Um, hope everyone was able to kind of see a good glimpse of Acumatica and then how we're able to point out some key differences between Business Central and Acumatica in the manufacturing side. Yeah, there are definitely differences between them, but it does seem that off the shelf, Acumatica's got, Acumatica's got some extra features that we wouldn't necessarily have uh, in BC as off the shelf. Uh, it's really nice to see that it seems to be a little bit more fleshed out in places that uh, make sense to. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. And I want to leave kind of everybody with this with this manufacturing flow uh, that's out of the box with Acumatica. It kind of gives a good idea of how manufacturing should work, right? Um, you have CAD connections, PLM connections, which is your design the bill of material. Then you go into planning. You plan that through demand forecast, master production forecast, sales orders, which create ultimately production orders, transfer orders, tra purchase orders. You schedule those out, you receive the quantities into production or into stock, right? And you ship out to a customer. So each one of these, right, different graphical views will, could take you into that particular part in the system, which is nice. I kind of want to end with this because this gives you a nice visual of, you know, overall and how supply chain really works on the manufacturing side. I think this is really good demo. I think it uh, shows and highlights some of the differences that we see uh, or that we saw last time on the business central side of things. There's some features that are out of the box um, in Acumatica that we didn't see in BC and also some of the UI improvements, as we said, about having to scroll up and down. Um, you have to do less of that, uh, it seems, on Acumatica. So from an off-the-shelf point of view, you could really start to hit the ground running, can't you, from a from a simple setup of manufacturing before you start to, as we said at the start, before you start to add extra features, um, extra um, fences into the system. You could get going very, very quickly. Thank you once again, Narav. Um, brilliant yeah. demo as always. And as always, it's highlighted some extra episode ideas uh, that we probably <laughs> need to dive into at a later date. Um, but yeah. I really do hope that this has given um, our users, uh, sorry, our viewers and our listeners some insights into manufacturing through ERP. It's been a great three-part mini-series that we've held. Um, certainly something that we will probably do again on different modules and yeah, features within ERP. Sure. So, uh, so thank you as ever. Uh, I will catch you in two weeks' time um, for our next episode. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Take it easy.